morning. This is Playing to Win with me, Mark Henderson Leary, and my good friend, Brad Fryer. How are you, sir? Man, I'm fantastic. A little bit tired, but doing pretty good. How about you? I'm well. We're starting three minutes late, so does that, does that throw you off, man? It, it did. It did. And the enthusiasm that you bring every morning always just comes as like a an electric <laughs> jolt to me. <laughs> a surprise every single week. Like, every where does that come week. from? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's going on in your world today, my friend? Today, today is going to be a busy day. You know, we got a lot of a lot of uh, training and coaching today, but a lot of recovery from uh, from the weekend. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, every year, I've got a trip that I take with uh, a bunch of, uh, of my college friends to uh, to a East Texas, Northeast Texas lake, and I won't name the name of the lake because I, it's it's a little hidden gem that I don't want you to come and crash. Uh, oh, okay. And so, um, but... What, uh, what, what does it rhyme with? <laughs> well, well, you're making me actually have to think. I don't know that I could, <laughs> I don't know that I could come up with a rhyme for it this morning. Uh, but, you know, you, 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 I, I'm sure you have relationships like this where you, you don't see them in a year. You come together and uh, you, you immediately pick up where you left off, regardless of, you know, a person's level of success or, or, um, accomplishments or anything. It's just, it's immediate, um, ribbing and, and picking on each other. And then we start solving the world's problems and the, the, the philosophy and the theories that are created, um, around the dining table and, uh, sitting on the back of a boat or, uh, are pretty profound. And so did you write any of this stuff down? No, but he is, uh, he's in the process of building a, a, a new house on the property. And, and I did suggest that in the dining room, he put a whiteboard so, so, that, while we're, <laughs> so that while we're pontificating, we can map out everything and take a picture of it so that we would remember it uh, a couple of days later. You know, but uh, there's, there's the, the uh, perspective is a really interesting thing. You know, when you, when you talk to folks about you know, what they're doing in their lives, their family, you know, how to, you know, how to manage uh, the relationship with children. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's really, it really is, uh, really is a good time. Well, perspective, uh, it, perspective is interesting. I think a lot of, well, vacations, clarity breaks, all the things that come with self-observation. And uh, it's a, a very interesting time right now. I'm working with a lot of companies who, um, are really struggling with really difficult challenges that are in other times, good, good problems. They've got, they've got an overworked staff. They're worried about their, their, their best teammates leaving. They're worried about, um, uh, be able to keep up with demand, disappointing customers, clients, and that kind of thing. And it's, you know, by all objective measures, it's, it's a, it's, these are problems of abundance. Yeah. And, uh, at this, what are you gonna say? No, I was to say, you know, and when you have these issues or challenges, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you know, the, the the reflection from this weekend was you have resources available to you. Most of us do, right? You know, yeah. if you have any relationships at all, and some of those relationships you might not put into that business advisor category, mm -hmm. but when you get together with a, a lot of people that you you may or may not think are smart. Um, and, and they knew who I'm talking about, um, <laughs> the people who are not smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you get together and, and you start just brainstorming and you start talking and you, you might share your perspective, they might have a different perspective because they're not in your industry. They're not in your world, but they, they have a, a different take on it based on their experience in their world. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. How often do we pull from from all of our relationships, how often do we really leverage the the people that we have and know to to give us perspective and to help us see see our world better? Well, that's a good point. Uh, I, I, it wasn't you and I talking about this, but I was oh, I was talking about um, some. I was talking to some uh, another coach friend of mine who does what I do, but also coaches U.S. implementers, and um, there was a lot of introspective work that they want us to do and, and, and the new implementers to do to understand the, the journey that they're on. And I sort of called out this thing like, well, we're, there's an awful lot of internal work that needs to be done here, but that's the kind of work that's often best facilitated by a coach or somebody outside who can help you reflect. And yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, 
there's a lot of power in the the exercise of forming your feelings into sentences and your thoughts into sentences and when you when you have to sort of like explain to somebody what it is that's going on it's uh you really realize there's a, a very tight window tight funnel that you have to get a small <laughs> A lot of information has to fit through a small a couple of sentences and for you to, to really think about what's most important and what that matters. The exercise of doing that mm-hmm. can be kind of kind of profound. Just just trying to figure out how to put into words what's been going on. And so that yeah. idea of reflection, the idea of, of some of informal boards of advisors, that, especially right now, how many people are just going crazy trying to keep up and and yeah. working and figuring out whether is there a new job in their future 40 was it you said it, somebody told me this is the 40 of the workforce is looking for new opportunities and so there's a lot of noise going on right now and yeah. how do you how do you cut through to get to, sen- to get that sense of perspective well what's interesting is that everybody also thinks their world is different right oh you don't understand my world is different but as you begin to talk to other people it's all the same problems and all all the same challenges it's just framed a little bit differently. And so when you're talking to someone who doesn't know your world, you're having to describe it a little bit more in depth. And so that allows you to better define what the problem is. And then while you're defining it, you're going through self-discovery. But then you also have somebody from the outside looking in who says, well, here's what the real issue is, right? I mean, you know, whether it's, whether it's challenges, you know, in your family, challenges in relationships, challenges in work, employees, you know, cash flow, P&L, marketing, sales, whatever it might be, having that outside perspective um, can can really clear clear up the complexity and, and bring it to the simplicity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. In fact, that's one of the things I learned to do is uh, if I'm starting to vent with, to somebody, even a coach or a friend or whomever, um, I learned that I don't, like, I don't ask questions well when I'm venting and describing what's going on. And so the people who are listening are like, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know. I don't know what. Do you want feedback? Do you do you want to help? Do you want to do you want me to like tune you out? Do you, are you critics? You know, correct your grammar. How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I learned to say like, I just let me go for a minute, and then I want yeah, you to reflect yeah. back to me what you thought you heard. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've been very surprised <laughs> by like what that. people what people say. Like, I hear a guy who's really confused about this decision and the other thing, and I'd be like, I didn't think that's what I was saying at all. But that's exactly right. That is exactly the essence of it. So some, yeah. I can't even hear myself sometimes. So it's helpful for somebody just to say, it sounded like you were saying this. Oh, okay. Yeah. One of the biggest well, and, challenges and, I, I – well, go ahead. I, I, well, I, I'm, you know, this and, might take us down a different path, so I want to make sure this gets okay. out. Well, and, and as someone who who has who has made a lot of decisions in my professional career, some have been very good and some have been very bad. You know, looking back and going, okay, well, what caused me to make mistakes in in my decision making? And a lot of times, it's because you know when you're dealing with your issue, when you're dealing with your problems, there's so much emotion embedded in that decision for you that we know that when you know your EQ IQ relationship, right? When emotions go up, intellect goes down. And so yeah. when you're emotional about a decision, you can't make a really thoughtful uh, choice. And so all the more reason to elicit you know, perspective from people around you, even if you don't feel like they're qualified to, to be an advisor, right? Doesn't mean you have to take their advice, but hearing, you know, we got 10 guys sitting around uh, in, in a lake house, you know, eating and drinking and and as we're talking about business and we're talking about the, the economy and the growth and Texas going to the SEC and all these great things, mm, yeah. um, <laughs> you, know, you, you realize that, yeah, although the perspectives are very different, the, there's an unbiased and unemotional perspective because they have no vested interest. They, you know, whether, whether it goes right or goes wrong, not going to affect them at all. And so that, that – but unemotional perspective is an important thing as you're growing your business, as you're trying to make life choices, as you're trying to, you know, in a fork in the road, which direction do I take? You know, seeking counsel from people who are not in the trench with you. You know, well, well, in that's fact, why if like you're the, in the trench, if you're yeah. asking for help from people outside the trench, they can see better than the people who are down in the trench. Well, that's what I love about the question. Like, what do you hear? What do you see? Because, uh, you, you know, as as entrepreneurs, organization members of the past, the idea of uh, gestalt, and if you know what that means, it's, it's just right. really just sharing experiences is a short answer to that rather than giving advice. And the difference is like, I could tell you what to do without any particular 
experience to back it up. It all could be my gut feel, my imagination yeah. based on the television shows I watch, you know, and so it could be full of BS. Experience share kind of tethers you to like, what have I actually done? And yeah. what my experiences might be grounded in some sense of truth. So when I'm, especially with, with a group of people who, who don't think have context, I don't want them to feel like they need to show up with some sort of solution because the odds are really high they're going to make up some nonsense. So when I say, I mean, they're just going to be like, well, I better, better sound smart suddenly about a subject I've never even ex- thought about. So I just say, like I said um, before, what did you hear? You know, what's, what's coming up for you when you hear this? You, you, are you watch it? Because sometimes I'll observe me. Like, you, you, you look scared or you look excited or you look something that, like, I, I, could, I wouldn't have gotten that from, from somebody telling me, like, you should do that. And like, well, that's the different, different experience. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and a, a great barometer for how capable somebody is to give, give guidance or advice is exactly what you're talking about, which is asking questions versus telling, right? You know, if, if you're having right. a conversation with someone and they do the old, well, you know what you ought to do, um, they might not be the person that is going to give you the best sound advice, but a person who says, well, Tell me more about that. Help me understand. What do you mean? What makes you feel this? What do you think is the best? Why do you feel that way? What are your alternatives? What, you know, and then, you know, well, let me share with what I've, what I went through. You yeah. know, let me share with you yeah. what I've experienced, you know, versus someone who's, well, you know what you ought to do. I wouldn't yeah. do it, but this is what you should do. Yeah, that's, uh, those guys are. So, so in, in that vein, this is the kind of slight, slight left turn. It, so I see a lot of people, especially visionary entrepreneurs, and I'm no different. We get into our habits. We get into our our. We we get into a state of busyness, and everything that goes wrong seems bad. And what I tell people, especially with people who are like, we got so, we got so much business coming, and I don't know how to serve it. I, I don't know how to hire these people. My three last employees are are, 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 are my three key employees are uh, two of them. I might leave, and one of them you know, I want to get rid of and we need to, re- I can know how to replace them. Say, so, well, the answer to everything you're trying to deal with there is right in front of you. It's just, it's just the getting comfortable with doing it. And that is saying no. You know, what do you mean? Like, well, you've got more business than you can handle. You can say no to some of it. You can, you, somebody can ask you to get something done in the next week and you can say, no, it's going to take a month that you can, you know, there's lots of ways to get, if you have a problem of abundance, you have all the levers you need to get everything you want. But it's, it's interesting how um, paralyzing the, those problems of abundance can be, especially, I mean, some of those integrator types, those operation, experienced operational folks are just sort of like almost reflexively saying, no, we're not doing that. Oh, no, no slow it down, we're, we're full. Nope, can't take the business. And they do that kind of automatically. But the visionary entrepreneurs and leaders are like, this is the day I've been dreaming of in terms of the, the, the demand side of things. We cannot miss the opportunity. And so they just kind of pull themselves into the firefight totally uh, outgunned and, and not ready to do it. So I spent a lot of time people with people trying to get them to be okay, what matters most to you? And this is the tying back to the reflection and saying like, are you more concerned with getting a few more deals in? Or are you concerned with your reputation for the highest quality? What matters most to you? And you're going to have to probably make a choice and say no to something. You might say no to quality <laughs> you might, or you might say no to somebody who you'd like to be able to help, but you can't right now and not serve yourself and serve them. Yeah. That makes sense. You ever struggle with saying no? Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I think I was I, waiting I, for you to say no. I was waiting for you to say no. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No, I don't no. say no. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think I think there's a. Uh, I think especially when it comes to opportunity, you know, it, it's hard to it's hard to to turn away from the prospect of something more something big um you know for me i think i've always i I have found that as as i think about the question what has probably helped me say no more is success you know and when you're more successful and when you have more ability to to be selective it's easy to say hey this this probably isn't going to be a good fit let me point you in a different direction versus when you're on the climb and you're just wanting to cobble everything together that you possibly can so that you have some platform to build off of. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. So I would say, yeah, sure. I've, I've had trouble saying no. And it was, it was probably on the climb 
And then, you know, once you hit a cruising altitude or a, or a place of comfort or um, perceived success, then the no becomes uh, easier. Uh, you probably have had a chance to more clearly define the no um, during that time, right? What makes a good customer? What makes a good opportunity? What's going to make me, you know, happy? What's going to help me with my time, help me with my optimism, efficiency, effectiveness, whatever that might be, versus what's going to detract it on it. So, I don't know, you? Yeah, well, yeah, uh, in, in many ways. And I think it. there's, there's a couple of veins this could go down. The first one is simply uh, the desire to please. And we talked mm-hmm. about this last time. If, if you practiced, uh, what, a wicked way we, what a wicked web we weave if we practice to please. And it's the same kind of thing. I don't want to say no. I don't want to disappoint people. Uh, if, if somebody, you know, yeah, I just don't want to disappoint people. Employees, customers, clients, whomever, let's move forward. And uh, at the same time, there is, back to reflection, I think this idea of getting that perspective, where are you? Yeah. For you to know, I, 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 I think it was Jordan Peterson who, who gave me some essence of this statement. It's like, it's one thing to know how to get from point A to point B. It, the, the hard part is figuring out how to get to point A because you're not there. Where are you? <laughs> and so, so yeah. the, the first step of that is where are you? Where are yeah. you? And if you know that you want to be at X revenue or if you want to have this team that has this culture that drives all these things, you've got to figure out whether if you're one leader away uh, and you've got to, got to hire, promote, coach somebody into that spot or are, are you just a solopreneur shop right now and you're going to have to start with the basics of a small team and operate and, and with excellence at that at that very small level and work your way up to structure and process and earn your way through the, the levels because one thing i've learned through the 15 20 years of, of, of really studying this stuff hard you cannot skip steps you can keep trying but you skip a step you try to get to the next level of maturity you slide right back down because you don't have the foundations and the knowledge to operate at that next level of of uh, of, of maturity you gotta you gotta work your way through each of the steps yeah yeah i mean it was, I, I giggled because i i think about once again I, I hate to continue to reflect on this weekend but you know i think so much of saying no is uh, is a byproduct of 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 self-awareness and knowing knowing what your priorities are right whether it's in business or in life knowing what's important to you um you know my comment that i made multiple times this weekend was you know no one ever says man i'm really glad i had that last drink right (laughs) it's always it's always the last one that gets you um and so it's not uncommon on weekends like this with with my with my friends for me to be the first one to bed right because I have, I, I have identified for me what that point of diminishing returns are. Yeah. And so, you know, as, as others are going, hey, my glass is empty, hit me again. <laughs> you know, I, I'm secretly pouring Gatorade and water into my cup and, and, and planning my Irish exit. Uh, that's and funny. So, you know, it, um, it that's, I, you know, I love that. I love, Cause I have that, it took me a while to get that voice too. Cause it's like, there's two, for me anyway, it's two voices. It's like, you know, that is a great idea. One more does sound great. <laughs> And and and, and and there's another there's another guy inside that says yeah how many times have you said that before we have yeah. a pro- we have a process and here's what okay. we're gonna do you're gonna sit yeah. you're gonna stand up <laughs> and, yep. and so I, I do think that's the door. I, I do think that's actually a good metaphor for business in the sense of process you know we do a lot of crazy especially sales process um, operational processes not as don't require the same kind of discipline uh, in terms of um, impulsiveness. Uh, sales process needs lots of process, process around impulsiveness because the sales rep wants to get in there and do something, drop the price, do well, if we just offered one more service and started one day earlier, like, that's the discipline goes, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, keep that's going, exa- keep that's going, exactly keep what, going. It's yeah. the drink. It's the drinking process. One more like, drink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, <laughs> one more drink. Operational process doesn't need as much kind of discipline, but I do think that's, that's right. You know, when when you're in the confusing state of one more drink feels good or you know i want to what do i do next in shipping this process or shipping this box out or, get, or manufacturing this thing or this thing's coming off the line we need to get this to the customer it, you really need uh, an instruction set of no this is what we do every single time yeah. keep yourself out of trouble yeah no I, I totally agree because they're you know but in sales and in business there you hit that point of diminishing return where the if you start throwing in that extra drink and the, the, the cheese balls and the, the desserts and all the stuff that you, all the bad decisions you start making when you're drinking, 
um, that begins to that it's begins like it's to bedtime cruise. or Taco Bell run. <laughs> exactly it. jack in the box jack it's jack in the box how far is jack in the box i think it's barely 20 40 minutes away let's go the cheese balls <laughs> i want more cheese balls um but that in sales is the same right how many times have you seen companies discount throw throw additional you know uh, offerings in and they they get to the point where there's so much cooked into this deal that after they close it they begin to question, man, this isn't even worth it. This this is a bad piece of business for us. And unless we can raise our price 50% at renewal, we're not going to want to do this customer, use this customer again, you know, or have this customer again. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, once again, it's the emotion, right? And when we allow emotion to affect our decision making, emotion goes up and elect goes down. You get dumb when you get emotional. And so in in the sales process and in business in general, Knowing in advance what your game plan is going to be, knowing in advance what your strategy is going to be, knowing in advance what those tipping points of good deal, bad deal are, right? You know, having having a, a linear approach to something that allows you to check the boxes as you go. And if one of the boxes doesn't check, not a good deal, pull the ripcord, let's get out of here. And being okay with that because you made that plan in advance. The problem is if you wait until the moment, to make those decisions, you see this opportunity and you get emotional and you see the opportunity going away and you get emotional. And so if you don't have that plan in advance, you're going to be making those decisions based on gut feel and emotion. And you can't, you'll make bad decisions when you're relying on gut feel and emotion. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And it starts with, I mean, what do you value most? Of course, core, va- core values for a culture, you have to know those. And, and that's behavioral for sure. But really, I mean, a sense of that core focus, like what, what gets you out of bed in the morning? And where do you where are you strongest in terms of your skill set? And you got to have the combination of those things crystal clear in yourself and everybody in the organization, because that's the litmus test that we drive high quality, we are making we are building an organization, we are we are we are competitive, whatever it is that that really wants us to move forward. And this is where we're strong. And so, you know, this is the skill set we have. We, we compete at the highest level in manufacturing these type of things or, or this type of service in these type of situations, complex situations, difficult situations, fast or slow situations, whatever we do. And when we have that crystal clear. We know from the get go, like this is either something that's going to work out great or it isn't. And I just think experience tells me that the more you know that going in, the more you sort of shed those bad opportunities early in the process. And then you're, you're able to have a very solid conversation about, look, this is what we do here. We, Mm -hmm. this, this is a solution that fits. This is what we do. And you seem to need that. Tell me where I'm crazy. Or it's, you know, it just, it does, it goes away on its own and you're more comfortable with that. But yep. you're right. If, if you haven't done that work, and I think this goes, it goes back to that reflection, having having coaches, peers, advisors, having done the work that you, know, you do that two day annual and get clear on that. And the one day quarterlies, you have to be doing this work. Otherwise, you're not going to have the in, in fact, the discipline that I've gotten really kind of obsessed with that comes out of EOS is a concept of prediction. And I may have harped on it a couple of times, but simply the prediction concept is look forward take a minute every once in a while, once a week and once a quarter at least. And the quarterly is sort of that long-term prediction of where are we going? Is our culture going the right direction? What's going to happen in the next 90 days? What, what do we need to solve for? Do we have holidays coming? Are we, you know, what kind of things are we, economics are going up or down? And simply ask yourself, what's, what are we likely walking towards? And that that is so powerful just to ask yourself, hey, I think we're going to need to hire a new sales rep. Well, right, what's that going to yeah. cost? Okay, let's make sure that the, the math is right. And that is the antidote to the to this last minute emotional state if you're looking forward you're not going to be as as blindsided you're going to handle those situations of, of bad customers you're going to do the, getting this feedback you're talking about is in essence an element of prediction you want people to see where you are where you're going and it's the most powerful thing to do just to pause and look into the future yeah i mean because if you don't take that pause you're working in the business not on the business right if you don't take that pause, you, you know, you, you wake up, you look around and you go, this isn't at all what I was thinking about doing, you know, or I'm, I'm lost, I'm right. stuck, I'm behind. I, I should have seen that coming, but I didn't. So, yeah, so taking the time, but also, you know, working with guys like you that can come in and, and help 
clear the clear the fog or create some perspective you know because you you aren't attached to the success or failure of the company i mean you are but you, i mean you want it but it's not going to change your life if they become a billionaire you know and so you know it's um it's it's leveraging those relationships leveraging perspective seeking counsel um and taking the time to your point to to look ahead uh from the standpoint of working on the business and not in it well it, it's the, easy, the easiest thing to talk about and the hardest thing to do is to say what are we going to look like in the next six to 12 months and yeah. everybody, everybody just starts talking about well we've always done this well, okay yeah you, i'm not attached to your past i am attached more to your future tell me what you're going to need in the future uh because we every business i work with at some point has been or will be stuck at a ceiling at some point and and so that that's a large portion of that ceiling is clinging to the past that got you here and not having the willingness to make the obvious changes to make um to put a set us up for success in the future the structural changes process changes yep. um, systems changes of, of any kind and so just letting go of the past and and putting your eyeballs on the future and that maybe it's your buddies at the lake maybe it's your eo forum maybe it's your vistage group you should definitely leverage getting some some visibility into challenging T don't tell me about the past we know the past is, is, is a big asset we love the past the future what do you need to do to get there where are you going and what are you hearing and what are you seeing and make sure you know what you stand for and if and if you don't have the tyranny of the urgent i kind of mumbled that the tyranny of the urgent telling love you it. what to do what do you tell yourself what is most important to you love if you don't know the answer you better find out because otherwise you will likely find yourself stuck under abundance which is a very difficult place to be stuck it's very frustrating because the op opportunity is there and you're it's just flowing through you're just you're grasping at straws and you cannot get a hold of it or you have no nothing to stand for at a time of scarcity and that's the time when people who do have something to stand for uh, shine and really dominate well said well we we started a few minutes late and so we need to wrap this up because it is officially nine o'clock right now so I am not going to put a, a, a cherry or a bow on top of what you just said, because I think you summed it up beautifully. Well, good. That, that's, uh, that takes some of the risk out of me talking us through the time frame. That was great, man. I was glad to connect. Uh, we will talk very soon, and we'll see you next week on Plan to Win with me, Mark Henderson-Leary, and Brad. See you next time. Have a good one.